Now, once you have the sample file open, uh, I want you to toggle on the project browser, scroll down to the sheets, and they open up A1 floor plan. And this is what a view label looks like from out of the box uh, library and templates uh, created by Autodesk. Typically, we would want to have the drawing number as well as the detail number in this title here. And also in this title, if we just go in here and make it a little bit longer, let's say for example, we go to the view name and then we're going to add another uh, suffix to it. say this is an entry level, it's a ground level. And then you can see that it will be too long and it's going to expand to two lines and start overlapping the underline and it just doesn't look very good. Now we're going to look at how to correct this uh, view title in this uh, project file. So you need to expand out your family section uh, in your project folder, uh, in your project browser, and then go to the annotation category of the family and look for M view title, this one. This is a family being used in this uh, view setting. So we're going to click on this and right mouse, highlight the M view title and then right mouse and then select edit. Now first I'm going to make this uh, view title, uh, view name, the margin quite a bit longer because sometimes we put a lot of information into this label here. So I'll make it quite long. So it won't break into two different lines. And also I want to make the vertical adjustment to be at the bottom. So when you have too much information, uh, it will break upward, it will expand upward rather than expand both up and down. When you have it aligned as a center alignment in vertical uh, setting, then it will overlap the underline. And I would probably want to lower this a little bit because if you look at the center line of this circle here, there's quite a lot of space between the label and the uh, the underline. So I'm going to use my arrow key on my keyboard and just tap it twice to lower it a little bit. And also want to move it over to the right side a little bit because I'm going to make this uh, bubble uh, a little bit bigger. Um, I'm going to hold down control, select the view scale, and then use my arrow key to move this over by two notch. And I'm going to click on this circle uh, here and then change the label rather than 6.5 millimeter, I want to change to 10 millimeters so that my circle is approximately is 20 millimeter, which is in imperial unit is around three quarter inch. So that is a typical size that I have used in my past, uh, doing a lot of architectural drawing. And I'm going to highlight this detail number and just the margin a little bit so that it fits inside the circle. So it won't go beyond the circle and use my arrow key and move it up to the upper portion of the circle. So it looks like it's in within the upper half of the circle. Then I'm going to go to click on the create tab in the ribbon panel and then select line. And I'm going to click on here to draw a horizontal line in the middle of the circle to split up into two parts. And I'm going to hit modify twice or hit escape twice on my keyboard to cancel the draw command. And I'm going to hit create tab in the ribbon panel again. And then I'm going to select label and I'm going to click from the type selector rather than six millimeter. I'm going to select four millimeter because I know the six millimeter label is going to be too big because I'm going to have four uh, character at the bottom here for my uh, page number. As you can see that if I click now, I will be lined up horizontally with the view scale and then vertically with the detail number. So I'm just going to click. And then the edit label dialog box will show up and I'm going to select sheet number as the field I want to include it into the label. And I'm going to click on this green uh, add parameter arrow uh, icon here and add that to the, the label. And in the sample value section of this column, I'm going to change this to A and then free X. I'm going to put my cap lock on A free X as a position for my sample value so I can judge how big uh, it is in this uh, view. And as you can see, it is a bit tight to the touching the, the circle at the bottom here. So and also the margin is quite wide. I don't need it to be that wide. So I'm going to reduce the margin so that it's approximately the same 
and so circle diameter looks like it's just a little bit off center so i'm going to zoom in a little bit and use my arrow key and nudge it over to the right just a little bit and then i'm going to, I'm going to use my arrow key to nudge it upward so that there's a little bit more space between the text and the circle so maybe a couple more click so one more maybe this is maybe one back down a little bit so this looks pretty good so i'm going to leave it like this and then I'm going to uh, save this and reload it back into the project file. Now you might think that, hey, this line is too thin. Usually we have a much bolder line for this. Well, you can actually do it in here, but um, bear in mind that if we go to manage to change the line weight of these items, if we click on this, this is actually uh, the categories view title. And if we try to look at the drop down, there's no other option unless you want to use invisible line, it doesn't print. So that's not a good uh, option for this line. And so we can actually, ha we have to go to manage and then select object style. And this uh, family file, there's only reference line, actually view title, this is only one. So if we change the weight of this line, say change the number six, and say apply. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And then if we change it back to maybe a little bit too heavy, change it back to five and select apply, or maybe even to four. It really doesn't matter what you select now, because when you load into the project, the project's object style will govern. So if we actually save this file, save, I'm going to save this in my uh, sample file directory and view title and overwrite the previous version. Now I'm going to load into my project. So we load it back into the project. This is a sample file. Select OK. And then I'm going to select the overwrite existing version and its parameter value option. You can see that it is it overwrite at the, the margins. So it's now on one line. And I see my uh, sheet number in here. Now, if I want to change the sheet number, I can go back up here to give it three digits. So if I click on my sheet and then uh, not every plan, look at the sheet area. So sheet A1 sheet. So if I actually right mouse, select rename, say we say this is A001, and it does fit nicely inside that space. And, but you see the line is still very thin because in this project, the object style for this item is still pen number one. So if you want to change the line weight of this circle and this line, you need to go to manage and adjust the object style inside this project file. And then from annotation object, you scroll down to view title and then change this line weight to say maybe five and then select apply. And you see this bolded up and if you really want you can make it even up to six so view title change it to pen number six if you want even to be bolder on those lines select apply and select ok so this is basic how you can um, modify your view title in your Revit project files now if you want the underline of this view label uh, to match up with the line weight of this bubble, you need to just put your mouse over the view and then don't click yet. Make sure that in the low left corner of the application window, you see viewport title with line, then you click. Then you select the viewport and you click on edit type. And in here, line weight, we're going to change it to six to match the bubble. So we're going to select apply and select OK. And now you can see that the line weight of the underline is matching up with the bubble. So I hope you enjoy this video. If you enjoy this video and find this helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you for watching.